I so appreciate all of you watching this film and I also realize most of the people that have been watching it have been hurt, hurt by their treatments in many different ways. And um, I just, uh, I'll get to the questions and I just wanna remind everyone that we'll save a couple of minutes so we can put up some websites uh, for the producers of Medicating Normal who have a website and they have listed some resources. And I encourage you to look at our website at Mind Freedom. It's just mindfreedom.org. Call the office if you want to check out something or you want to do something of meaning in helping Mind Freedom. We're small, but we're expanding and we're fighting a really, really big battle. So let me just go through uh, who the panel is and let them introduce themselves and then we'll get to the questions. Thank you for hanging in there and sticking around. Angie, would you like to start? Sure, my name is Angie. Um, you saw my story in the film. I'm now four and a half years off of meds. I just went back to school and kind of as a way to distract myself during the healing because it was so brutal but i earned my master's in social work and i did it like as a double agent to learn their language so that i could fight back on the outside when i got done so now i'm just um doing a lot of community organizing helping facilitate these discussions all across the country i've been traveling in an rv until the pandemic happened so i just look forward to everything y'all have to say thanks cindy would you introduce yourself um, sure. Uh, my name is Cindy. Um, I'm a psychiatric survivor, member of Mind Freedom Seattle, nutritional therapy practitioner, and advocate for alternatives to psych drugs. So my story, um, in 1999, I sought help from a doctor for an upset stomach that I'd had for many years. And he told me I had an anxiety disorder, needed to take a drug for chemical imbalance. I was prescribed a Fexer and I thought the doctor was the expert, so I followed his suggestion and took it. And then over the months and then years, my body actually felt worse, um, including but not limited to feeling more anxious. My stomach was more upset and then my body felt exhausted. And the only thing the doctor ever did when I shared that I felt worse was just to increase the dose. And then eventually the benzoclonazepam was added but still everything continued to get worse. And then a friend shared the book, Anatomy of an Epidemic, um, it was talked about by Robert Whitaker. It was mentioned in the documentary that explains how the drug can create anxiety and other problems. And so this book was the beginning of me learning that I do not have a chemical imbalance in my brain and that psych drugs are not fixing something that is wrong with me, which I had suspected, but had pushed aside my inner wisdom. So then I decided to withdraw from the drugs and I'm now six years off of them. And my mojo is back, which is exciting. Um, however, my withdrawal experience was horrible and I did not receive support or accurate knowledge from doctors to withdraw and detox safely. But um, my belief is that my anxiety was a normal reaction to my circumstances, not a chemical imbalance or pathology. And this has helped me begin the exploration of learning what my anxiety is telling me and then what I can do about it. And so what has been helpful for me is discovering the root cause and messages of anxiety, eating nutritiously, being aware of and standing up for my values, doing self-actualization work such as behavior pattern awareness, shadow work, discovering my inner locus of control, connecting to my inner wisdom and taking charge of fulfilling my needs, by finding choices that fit my energy and values. And all of this has empowered me to be more centered, present, and at peace. Thank you, Cindy. Celia, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Celia Brown. Um, I, I really enjoyed the film. Um, and. I'm a psychiatric survivor and I'm the board president of Mind Freedom International. I'm also the co-founder of Surviving Race, the intersection of injustice 
disability and human rights. Uh, I started on this journey when I was um, like 16, 17 years old. I was having some, some problems with depression and some traumatic events in my life where I was in, um, involuntarily committed to an adolescence unit. And just from there, I was experimented on on drugs. Nobody ever asked me how I felt, you know, uh, just like Angie was saying in the film. Uh, so just all these different cocktails of meds that really uh, messed me up for a while. And so I realized that I had to really understand myself and what these drugs were. And eventually I was tapered off. Um, I mean, I was on Haldol, Thorazine, you know, uh, Mineral with Ritalin. That, that combination was horrible. Uh, and then lithium, which I can say has really kind of helped me at, at the beginning, but then I, I couldn't stay on it long term. So during my journey, um, I was in a housing program and I was invited to go to a conference called Self Help Vision in Troy, New York near Albany, and I was considered like one of three people as high function in quotes. So I went to the conference and I was blown away. I met, I met Judy Chamberlain, who's um, an act, who was an activist in our consumer survivor expatriation movement. I, I met um, Harry the Harp and, and Joe Rogers and Ed Knight and so many people who were working on alternatives to the mental health system and to services that they were creating alternatives for themselves, for others. And I um, remember asking Judy, like, who's allowing you to do this? <laughs> And she says, no one, we, we have, we're in power to do this. We have rights and, you know, and I went back to my housing program, started to, to do community organizing of the residents that were there. To my whole life, my life has completely changed because I always knew that something was different, but wasn't around like-minded people to really exercise my own beliefs. It was more of the medical model that I had to, you know, subscribe to. So I, uh, you know, I, I constantly work on my own recovery. And I, I also want to say that's helped is reading articles at the time and newsletters. Uh, I used to read Judy Chamberlain's articles and I used to read uh, David Oakes, read his articles and uh, how and then as time went by, my friend and colleague, uh, Ron Bassman, wrote a book, A Fight to Be, and I started reading that. He also did a lot of journal articles. And that ha helped support my recovery. So I think that there's so many different ways to, to feel better about who you are, that you, you don't have to be, quote, normal. You're just who you are, you know? Like boycott normal, David Oaks used to say. And uh, I just could be everything that I am. So thank you so much. Thank you, Celia. And uh, last but not least of our panel is our filmmaker, Lynn Cunningham. Lynn, you have to turn your mute off. Thank you, Ron and Celia, Sarah, Jim, Patrick, and everyone at Mind Freedom for screening our film, Medicating Normal, and also to the audience for taking the time out of their day to show up. It really means a lot. And um, I wanna say that it, it, the film began as a personal journey on behalf of a family member. Um, but as my filmmaking partner, Wendy and I um, began our research and started interviewing hundreds of individuals across the country, disabled by their drugs. Each story touched us deeply and convinced us that great harm was being done on a large scale. Um, and so it was somewhere in that process that we realized that, um, well, that our film had transformed itself from a personal investigation into a real mission. I mean, we, we knew that we had to do it. Um, 
it's important to reiterate though that this this film offers one perspective of many and um you know trying to come up with a title for it was just we pulled our hair out but i just want to say celia we should have called it boycotting normal because that's a great title um but um we feel it is one perspective there are so many different <laughs> perspectives out there on this topic um having presented it at five festivals um this past year since january more than 75 community screenings nationwide um we are convinced that this is a story that has to be told um it is one that is not necessarily being acknowledged by the mainstream um so we, we've got to we've got to tell it and we've got to talk about it and that's one of the the best parts about the film is that the conversation afterwards and everyone brings up different aspects different perspectives even disagreeing with us is really really important to us because it's just it's it's putting it into the public realm that matters the most um and finally you know we're asked oh gosh will this film convince people who really need their meds to go off of them and you know whatever one believes about that uh that that is not our mission our mission is that we want to encourage thoughtful and informed decision decision making before someone decides to go on medication and um, as a society to think about and talk about these things and also thoughtful decision making before someone chooses thoughtful and informed decision making before someone chooses to go off of a med so um uh let's start talking about it and thank you again ron for showing it thanks lynn uh, I've got a bunch of questions here that people have asked and I'll try to go through them in the order that I've received. We've received them, um, trying to limit it mostly to one question per person so we can get through all of them. Uh, this question was not addressed to anybody in particular, but to the panel. And it was, the question is, so what is the key to break the lock that psycho slash pharma has on our minds and social thinking? How can we change the paradigm that has the weight of 80 billion a year behind it? Madden America is a start, but it is still about 79 billion behind. Does anyone want to take that? Well, I'll, I'll jump in unless somebody else wants to. I just want to say just by, I think the dialogue is important, Ron talking about it and hearing from people, learning from each other, not, not pretending to know the answers, but to be working through the answers, answers with each other and challenging um, and, and, and self-education. We've often talked about how important it is to learn about what you are putting into your body and just read. Um, do, everyone should be doing sort of what we did in the, for this film, just listening, reading, learning. And that's a start. I think um, I like your answer, Lynn. The one thing that, and I know a film can't cover anything, and one thing that's missing that we in Mind Freedom are intensely involved in is, I don't know the number, but so many people are forced to take psychiatric drugs against their will, and it really doesn't much matter whether they have information or not. It's a question of us really working to protect people and um, public information is all that we can do. Um, and that's what we're trying at Mind Freedom. Anybody else on the panel want to respond to that question? Go ahead. Yeah, Ari. I was just thinking we just, we need to tell our stories. All of us that have harmed, there's so much shame in saying first that you have your diagnosis of some kind and then to say that you take medications, there's that. And then to say, now I'm off my medications and they hurt me is like an enormous, taboo that nobody wants to talk about. So I just invite everyone to share your story in whatever way that is possible or to talk to friends or to um, just bring more awareness to this because I really think that the key to this is gonna be one person at a time, not like a systems change. I just don't see it happening. I am very cynical about that. Okay, I, I would just say- Hi, I'm Ron. Can I... Go ahead, Celia. Yeah, I, um, for, maybe five years ago, I worked on the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities at the United Nations. 
And this convention was done for and by people with disabilities, including people with um, psychiatric, uh, psychosocial disabilities as a read upon language internationally. And we need our rights um, now, I believe. And no matter what the media or the mental health system is doing, is that it really hurts us when our rights are being violated as well. And I do agree with sharing a story. I do that a lot. But if you have a perceived disability or mental illness, you are thought to not be able to make any decisions on your own, okay? So you're, not, you're seen as uh, inhuman and that the decisions are gonna be made from psychiatry and from the court system and it will not be from you. And I see that as a problem that is, it, it's not gonna change overnight. Here we are in 2020, here we are. We had a movement, we had, have a movement that's been working on these issues for like 30 years or so, and, and here we are still now. So I, I, we have to educate each other and educate, let people know you can have informed consent. Find out what the psychiatric drugs are if you're taking them and what choices do you have. It is your life and it is up to you. Thank you. Okay, I, I can't help but saying that we're working on right now at, at Mind Freedom, it, this is a very big issue and we're in a phase of history, a period of time where there are other movements going on that there's an opening and things can get better and they can get worse. And what we are trying to do is join together with other groups with cross disability, with Black Lives Matter, and groups that are advocating for rights. And the la last thing I can say about this is we need to get rid of congregate living, whether it's a nursing home, an adult home, a prison, a psychiatric hospital, these don't help. We need to bring people back in their communities and that's when we'll have more choice and we'll have more rights, but we have to band together in these common themes is what I'm seeing. And it's a long, long journey. Okay, next question. Um, is this film available to be shown by Julie Sherman? Um, Lynn, do you uh, want to, or Angie answer that? Our current, uh, we, we are, Yes, the film is available, but it, in community screening events like this for this year. And then um, in, at about January, we will be making um, deals to have it be available as a streaming event um, and hopefully broadcast. We're hoping very much to broadcast it as well, um, maybe on PBS. Um, but the important part of this phase is that it's communal screening with discussion afterwards. Um, there are many different kinds of groups that we want to do this for. Medical schools, um, that will be hard, but we really want to do that. Um, and, you know, the communities that matter, the stakeholders, you know, all different kinds of communities. So I urge anybody watching the film who wants it to be screened for their community or knows of a community who might benefit from it, um, that's most important to us right now, but it will be available. Um, we need to have it unfold. Thank you. Uh, let another next question is where are the doctors from in the film? Are they all from the East Coast? Um, let's see. No, there are two from California. That would be uh, Dr. Anna Lemke at Stanford. Uh, Alan Francis, he's, he was on the East Coast. He is now in San Diego. Um, he's retired. Uh, Dr. Mary Veaton is from Maryland. Um, Angie, help me out. Let's see, Dr. Um, Kelly Brogan is in Miami. Uh, uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan is in Miami and- Peter Gocha, uh, did you say? Peter Gocha is in Denmark and- um, I think that's Ivan Jordan, who's our pharmacist, is New York City. Um, anyway, no, they're not all from New York, but 
we can get you in touch with them if you if you if you want to be. David Cohn is a doctor of social work. He's at Stanford. He was one of the people in the film, and he's probably done the most work long term with research. And uh, I met him about thirty years ago, and I'm proud to call him a friend. And he's very accessible. Yes, uh, he's actually at UCLA, Ron. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Peter Garcia has just come out with a new book uh, about the drugs and withdrawal from the drugs, and um, it's uh, available as a free download. Um, I don't have it handy, but if you if you uh, email me at Mind Freedom, uh, we'll get you that um, link. Okay. Uh, is there support for individuals who want to wean off psychiatric drugs? And that comes from Sarah Smith, who is at our Mind Freedom office and keeps us going. Anybody want to respond to that? We have, we have if you visit our website at medicatingnormal.com, we have a list of resources and um, Madden America has a list of resources. There are resources out there and uh, just contact us or check that out. Angie, do you want to add to our? Yeah, just that like uh, Peter Gertrude's book is out. Um, David Cohen has a book. It's on our reading list. There's also Will Hall Harm Reduction Guide to Psychiatric Drugs for Tapering, How to Learn About Safe Tapering, and then the Inner Compass Initiative. But yeah, like she said, they're all on our website under resources. Okay, I, I see that Sarah's asked three questions, so I'm going to be a little biased and add another question from her. And that is, given the risks of psychiatric drugs, do you think it is, that it is okay to subject people to psychiatric interventions by force or coercion? I do not, but I'm going to hand that over to Angie, who has an. Uh, this is Celia. I was. Oh, yeah, let Celia answer. Go ahead, Celia. Oh, all right. Uh, no, I, I, I think, um, I think we have to constantly change the paradigm shift. And Lara, you do a lot of education of people that contact office or email, because it's still a lot of family members and and peers, the sex survivors, really don't know about this, and that they can. Um, work on, um, you know, other alternatives or ways to stop the force from happening. And I'll, I'll let Ron talk about S.H.I.E.L.D. But um, we have to constantly educate each other because we can't assume that all of the world knows that they can have a choice and they can do informed consent. I'm not saying it's easy because it's not. You can be forced. But working through that and having providing alternatives, and 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 we can't be responsible in, in the consumer survivor community that we're going to provide all the alternatives. We simply do not have all the funding for it, but we have we have created things over the years and now that needs to get out there. Like we have Hearing Voices Network, which is international. And, uh, you know, we have intentional peer support, you know, uh, Sarah, um, we have a, 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 um, a manual that Mind Freedom has. Can you put that in the chat? That's very valuable to learn about a lot of these alternatives. Angie, did you want to add something? No, that was perfect. It was perfect. Okay. I would, I just remember a statement by Judy Chamberlain, who was probably one of the first people in our movement and created um, the great book on our own that talked about support from within, that we needed to support each other. And she would say, if I go into the hospital and I have cancer, I can refuse cancer treatments because I don't want them because the side effects, even if it'll kill me, but if I go into a psychiatric hospital, I have no rights to make that choice. And just a little aside, I have a film called Crazy Women that I need to get converted into digital. 
that has the founders of the movement. And uh, they're sitting around in Ray Unziker's home discussing what it's like. And some of these issues continue today. And once I get it digitalized, I'm hoping to show it as we did this one. Okay. Uh, this comes from Ben Cooley Hall. And Lynn, thank you for your part of this powerful film. I am so glad that you made it. It is so desperately needed. My question, do you have any interest or plans to make a similar film possibly called Medicating Abnormal? Another title. Um, we are so dedicated to getting, there's so much to talk about with this film that most of our resources at the moment are, are tied up with, with getting this film out there um, as many places as we can. We would love to make another film, but resources are thin at this very moment. And I also feel that the discussion is only beginning to happen. So um, maybe in about a year, we'll start to think about it. But for now, um, we are dedicated to this. But um, thank him for his support and um, keep sending ideas. Maybe he should make a film. <laughs> We're encouraging other filmmakers to take up the mantle. Yeah. Um, okay, next question from Holly Martin. I feel like such a newcomer to this movement. Would your panel consider clarifying what is meant by a psychiatric survivor for those who might not know or even outsiders who may see it as such a minority? Also, what to say to those having to take medication and lost that choice when locked up? I'll just say a little bit. I don't, I actually reject that term a little bit because it just, I'm like, I don't want another label, like another one, you know? So I have a hard time, you know, labeling myself with anything anymore, but it just means that we have survived being in the mental health care system, whatever way that looked like, whether it was medication or forced medication or coercion. So people identify as that once they've left the system or are in the process of leaving. And then to say people that are being forced right now, what would I say? It's pretty controversial. I would say, oh God, I'm scared to say it, but I would say just Don't tell say them what it. they need to hear and get the hell away. <laughs> Be nice, obey, get the hell away from them and get your life back. That's what I would say. You know, I just want to add um, something ahead, to the psychiatric survivor to I'm with Angie and I don't want another label, but one thing that has helped me is empower me because the psychiatry system disempowered me. And so by saying that I'm free from it, I don't know, it's sort of liberating that I'm not reliant on it um, in, in that way. Language is, is tricky. It can be something that expands who you are or diminishes who you are. I would suggest Holly, as a newcomer, we have a free downloadable book that we did this past year. Um, and it, one of the chapters deals with the history of our movement. And you may get a much better understanding from reading that. And it's, it's really for organizing and joining together. And um, Sarah, if you're on, why don't you type in in the chat um, how to get that? And if it doesn't come through, then you can just go to our website and you can find it on there. There's also a hard copy that we've reserved for people who are in an institution and don't have access to downloading it. The next question is from Ann Casper. Angie and Cindy, how did you pay for the medications? Were they totally covered by insurance? Did you have big co-pays? Um, my copay was about twenty dollars a month for the medications. Um, yeah, that's that speaks to an issue of access, and unfortunately, I have the best access to healthcare anybody can get because of the Veterans Affairs, and for Medicare for Social Security. So, my increased access led to more medications. So everything was free, all those years. It's not necessarily a good thing. Next question comes from Gabriella Corluca Kamenicki. 
Questions for Angela. What is your game plan going forward to dismantle psychiatric and pharma conspiracy and racket? Right now, this is my game plan. I have to continue healing because I'm still pretty damaged by this, like pretty traumatized by um, looking back at my life, thinking that, you know, even five years ago, I would have said the meds were helping me and they saved my life. And don't you dare talk about them in any kind of way. Um, so I'm still healing, but I think as I heal, I'm able to do more. Um, so this, this type thing is what I live for. I had the opportunity to be like a one-on-one -on -one therapist and I just refused. I was like, no, I don't want to speak to one person for one hour. I want to speak to a, what 92 right now. So this is my giving back, um, just one person at a time. That's my game plan. Just boosting the, um, awareness about all of these issues are so complex, but I just hope I, my story can help change this somehow and that'll make it some of the suffering worth it. Thank you. Uh, Jim, would you just give me a reminder five or six minutes before we run out of time? Well, we are a few minutes before three, so maybe take a couple more, one, maybe one more question, then wrap up. Okay. I am in, uh, this is from Tina Sernitsky. I am interested in titrating my meds that I've been taking, wow, 26 years. Is there a group slash professional that can help do this by taking charge of my medications? Um, can I answer that? Sure. Yeah. Well, part of it is, it's really scary to say this, but like the medical institution as a whole has kind of left a lot of patients on their own. Patients every single day cannot find a doctor to help them which is pretty radical that um, our lay person community has developed their own ways of tapering. As you saw in the film, there was a few, you know, by counting the beads or by scraping it off of the razor blade or weighing it. So again, I would refer you to our website uh, under resources. There's different guides like Will Hall's Harm Reduction Guide to Psychiatric Drug Withdrawal. There's other books to teach you. And I know in an altered state when you are like so cognitively impaired by the meds like I was as well. You can't, it's hard to like figure out like how fast do I taper or how slow, but really step one is getting yourself informed about what tapering looks like. And there's many resources to read. So um, do that. But part of this process, even for me especially, was taking my own power back that, that maybe there's not a doctor that's gonna help me heal from this. Or there's not an easy fix. It's going to take a lot of years. I mean, in the film, you saw that I said I was on 17 medications. That was in 2006. So it took me from 2006 to 2016 to taper off of everything and slowly, slowly, slowly pull myself away from the mental health system. That's not going to be for everybody, obviously, but that's what I had to do. And it's just a slow process and a lot of figuring it out on your own and looking to our community that's already done it for the success stories and the hope and how to do it safely. So I would just recommend you educate yourself as much as possible. Thank you. The one thing I would add is make sure that you find a support group and let them know you'll need support that, at that time because you know obviously you're gonna go through ups and downs and, and different thoughts about whether you can continue or not. It's the people that you can talk to, just tell what you're going through will be really important. I can see there's a lot of unanswered questions, some good questions I haven't been able to, to get through because I, I want to leave just a couple of minutes for people to say some final words. Um, I'm going to start with, um, well, start with you, Angie. Anything that you want to tell people how to get in touch with you or resources? I'll just say that um, if you know of anybody that wants to do a community screening like this, just email us at medicatingnormal at gmail.com and we'll set it up. Um, just, I, I would think I, as, a, as a, I would say to the whole community, we have to come up with resources and tight communities and closeness to each other to prevent further harm, to heal from some of these traumas that we all experience, just stay close to each other and just, I don't know, help us. We, we just got to change this. Every day I think about kids being medicated against, you know, like eight year olds on all these medications and elderly people in nursing homes on antipsychotics. And it just, it's like overwhelming when you think about how much harm is being done to a lot of people. Thank you. Cindy, would you? Um, yeah, just um, 
keep questioning things, um, run like Phoebe in the show Friends, play the drums like Animal and the Muppets, and dance like Elaine in Seinfeld. <laughs> Thank you. I have some humor. Jim, you've really made this possible. Do you want to add anything, have a chance to say anything? My video? I don't even know if I'm showing up on the screen. Yeah, you're showing up. Oh. I mean, everyone has said so much. I mean, all right, as somebody that, that got off psych drugs, I think one of the things that we also need to explore is how to support people in kind of refinding their inner compass afterwards. Um, I think that because of the like incredible harm that people are uh, experiencing and like getting off seems to be the, the goal. Um, and that's so challenging that we're so focused on that. Uh, I think, and unfortunately, we also um, are going to have to realize that after people get off, there's more support that's needed then. Um, and I know that was really difficult for me was after being off them, kind of being like, well, geez, you know, all these things that I attributed to that, now, now what's left? And so it's like a whole new process afterwards. So. It's a long road, but um, you know, we're doing it and it's, it's life and um, that's all. <laughs> um, one thing I would add is that Jim will be um, putting together and sending out to people um, some of the discussion we had on the forum. So Jim, if you can, um, if there's a way to include the chats someplace, because there's a lot of interest in uh, talking. So what we can do is um, I've recorded the discussion and we'll post the discussion. And so maybe um, it'll be on YouTube, maybe in the description of the video, I'll include a link to the chat so people can, can follow that. I don't think there'll be enough space to put the entire chat in there, but if I have a link, that could work. Great, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Um, Lynn, would you like to add a few things? I don't know if Lynn's still here. Celia, are you still here? Oh, there she is. Okay. I just wanna say gratitude. Gratitude for the team, our team in the making of this film. Gratitude to every single person that we met along the way, even if they're not in the film, they still played an enormous role in the making of the film. Gratitude to our subjects in the film, um, our supporters, it's just, I think what it is, is that when you come together and do something like this, it expands your world. And I think that relationships are really, really important and they are healing and they can get you through bad times. And I just, if anyone was gonna say, my, my beloved family member who began the journey, um, she's not off all of her meds, she's reduced a lot of them and is in a much better place. But I think what really helped her um, was because she is in a loving relationship and um, the support. And so surround yourself. If your family doesn't work, surround yourself with your friends who are loving and just get out there and do stuff like this and listen to each other's stories. Celia? Yeah, I just want to thank the filmmakers and Cindy Angie, Lynn, and Ron, and Jim, also Sarah Smith. I think this is very enlightening for me, although I've seen a lot of videos similar, but not quite like this. And I think that it, it, it gives the notion that people have started out taking psychiatric drugs and really wanted to help themselves and it didn't work out. I also want to say that I was very happy to see Shalimar, who's a black woman from New York, and I'm from New York, talking about her experiences. Um, I think there needs to be, uh, and we're working on it, is an intersection of people of color uh, in, in our movement um, and other movements. And we need to partner um, the psychiatric survivor movement with the Black Lives Matter movement and other movements that are coming up so we can fully understand what is the intersection of all of these different issues. We're not there yet, 
okay? But uh, I'm, I'm certainly working on it, and some of my colleagues are working on it, and it, it really promotes uh, healing. So I just want to give kudos to, um, you know, the film and to everybody who's on the call today. I think this was just very, very healing for me, and I, and I hope that it's going to be for others in the future. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all on the forum. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Patrick, for signing for us. And um, I hope that this is a tough film to watch for many of us who have been through these experiences, but I hope you will see some way to join and change what is happening to much, much too many people. And um, we'll continue to work on it. This is a journey where we have to let go of the perfect. We'll never be perfect, but not lose the sight of the good things that we can do. So please join with us. And thanks again. I'm really glad that this film was made, shown, and for all the people who are watching. So, so long, and we'll notify you about the next film. Bye, everyone.